harvested by man for 10,000 years. But only now has a team of British scientists succeeded in unlocking the secrets of wheat. Its genetic code is five times more complex than human DNA, and it's now been cracked. And the hope is this could help feed the one billion people who find themselves going hungry every year. While 550 million tons of wheat are grown annually, it can still leave many without food. And that's because of the crop being susceptible to floods, fire and disease. But with the ability to tailor make wheat for harsh conditions, could this breakthrough mean a better future or a fuller future for billions? Al Jazeera's Lawrence Lee reports. The price of bread is a question that affects people in every continent and therefore the sustainability of wheat is a vital issue. Climate change or disasters can lead to wheat prices rising and food shortages on the streets. Food security is likely to be a bigger and bigger concern in the future and that's why finding a way to make wheat more resistant and stronger has the capacity to help feed the world. That super wheat is the basis it is based upon conventional wheat, so taking the bits from all different wheat varieties across the world and bringing them together into a wheat that can cope with drought, can cope with other stress, can cope with diseases, etc. There's no question this announcement is a genuine step forward. The research carried out by the British scientists was incredibly complicated and has huge potential. Wheat's genetic code contains 16 billion base chemicals and around 80,000 genes. That makes the wheat genome five times bigger than the human genome, and even with the latest technology decoding, it took a year. The estimated world harvest of wheat is around 550 million tonnes. It's a major staple for billions. So mixing different strains of wheat, leading to bigger yields and more resistance to poor weather conditions, could have huge implications. Recently, Russia banned wheat exports after drought affected crops. Ukraine, long known as the breadbasket of Europe, is threatening to impose quotas because of bad weather. Some campaigners say that despite the obvious hope that science brings, it alone doesn't guarantee an end to hunger. Uh, undoubtedly, any breakthrough that helps to increase production is part of the solution, but it's not going to solve world hunger. That's the main issue, because world hunger isn't just a matter of food production, it's a matter of distribution, access to resources, and, access, and, and affordability of the food that is there in the first place. Some commentators point out that the potential downside of this discovery is that when more food is produced, population growth can follow, and after all, the world isn't getting any bigger. The scientists who made these findings are now making them freely available so the rest of the world can consider what to do with this new knowledge. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera. Well, for more on this, we can speak to Matthew Reynolds, who's a wheat physiologist at the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center. He joins us via Skype from Texcoco in Mexico. Uh, welcome, Matthew. How would you describe the breaking down of the genome, the wheat genome, and its importance? Well, it's a, certainly a major breakthrough uh, because the wheat genome is, is the biggest genome of any crop. It's 50 times bigger. And although other crops have, uh, have been sequenced, this, this wheat is the most widely grown crop in the world. So it's really an important step. In, in the past, Matthew, um, there have been some incredible agrarian developments, but they have sometimes benefited the richer com countries more than the poorer countries. Is there any way of ensuring this won't happen next time? Well, I think that's a question of, of putting money in the right place, obviously. We need uh, public funded research programs. At the moment, we're putting together an international wheat yield consortium to, with a specific objective of raising the, the yield potential wheat by 50%. Uh, we've got backing from, uh, we've had backing from the USAID, from uh, BBSRC UK, and we're collaborating with, with, with researchers all around the world. Our organization focuses explicitly on less developed countries, but we have the technology from all, all of the major advanced institutes in the world who have something at uh, least we're looking Can you explain a little more, Matthew, in, in layman's terms about what a development like this might mean for somebody who's starving in Africa? Okay, well, absolutely. The, the, uh, the traditional method of breeding is to observe crops in the field. They do an analysis of crops that can be observed or measured. With, with this kind of technology, it means that we'll be able to 
more precisely put together genes to, to, to address specific problems like drought, like heat stress that will be a major factor in climate change. So we're able to focus in on specific combinations of genes that will help environment and, and, and the environments that are most in need of, of uh, impre- increasing all right, Matthew, that's, that's very clear. Um, unfortunately, technology is letting us down. We can see you very well, but sometimes we couldn't hear you perfectly. So we're going to call it a day there. But I know we both agree this is a, a major development in the fight against world hunger. Thanks for joining us.